Hi folks, David Waring here again with InformTrades.com and today's lesson of the day. In our last lesson on how to develop a trading system, we looked at the rules that had been put together in previous lessons and how to backtest those rules to see what the results would have been had we traded them on historical data. In today's lesson, we're going to wrap up our discussion on system trading with a look at how to walk forward those same results so that we can make sure that the results have not been curve fitted to historical data. Today's lesson was put together by Inform Trades community member and founder of OneStepRemoved.com, Sean Overton. So let's get started. Hi, this is Sean Overton with OneStepRemoved.com in partnership with InformTrades.com. In this lesson, we're going to talk about the walk forward test. And this is the idea that we, now that we've optimized our strategy for the in sample data, what we want to do is apply it to out of sample data where we've never seen the prices before. We want to make sure that our strategy holds up in new unseen market conditions. On the screen, you're, you'll see the equity curve for the Euro US dollar over an equal time period. The, Middle left is the in-sample data, and to the right you'll see the out-of-sample data. What you find is that the in-sample data is a gorgeous perfect equity curve that's almost a perfect 45 degree line. This is very common for optimized results. And then over to the right you'll see that the, beha the behavior and the performance gets a little more choppy. However, there is some consistency there. Uh, some concerns are that the first drawdown occurs out of sample, although that it does start occurring in sample. The encouraging thing is that it recovers from that and reaches new equity highs and sustains them. The problem is that this equity curve doesn't include any trading costs, and that's obviously completely unrealistic. You have spreads, uh, some brokers charge commissions, so th this is not the result you would get if you actually traded it. Applying commissions to the equity curve, you'll see that it goes from being gorgeous to awful. It has a $6,000 loss before it reaches a new equity high of $6,000 and then it starts drawing down again. The lesson being that it's over trading. If, if you could trade for free, it would work. Or if you traded less often or more profitably, then it would work. The easiest way to solve this is instead of changing the rules, you just change the time frame. If we can improve the dollar value of our average winner and reduce the number of trades, then the system would probably work. Applying it to multiple currencies on four hour charts, you can see that's the case. Now, I am somewhat surprised because the euro dollar performance is notably worse on a four hour chart, but I'm encouraged because the four hour chart shows some fantastic results for some currency pairs. The most notable being Australian dollar and the pound yen, particularly the pound yen. And this is also encouraging because we ne we didn't do any of our optimizations on those currency pairs, but in the out of sample data, they held up extremely well. Now there are some pitfalls with this strategy. Uh, the first one would be the f our fundamental assumption, and this is not something that you can do any uh, any system development for, or if you do, it can get very complicated. And that's our basic assumption. Our basic assumption is that the market is always going to trend. And as anybody knows who's traded more than a few months, that is definitely not the case. So my opinion is that this strategy is best applied as a gray box strategy, meaning that you decide when you think the market is likely to start or to continue trade, uh, trending. And when that occurs, then you turn the system on. When you think the market is going to start ranging, then you turn it off pretty simple, but uh, that can help you avoid some of the chop and uh, some of the losses. Currencies are known as one of the trendiest markets in the world, and so I would expect this strategy to work in currencies, but I would expect it to fall apart on pretty much any other market, reason being trend the currencies trend more than any other market, so this is more likely to work because it's a trending strategy. Finally, I uh, we did some very simple analysis when it came to designing and implementing the strategy. There's a number of ways to go about considering improvements. I don't think I would call this polished or done by any means, but I do think it gives you an idea into the process. The first place I'd start is by using stop and limit orders at entry, just to take a look and see how it behaves. Stop orders have the advantage of uh, waiting for price confirmation. So instead of entering immediately when the RSI is 
at 73 or more, you wait for the market to continue moving in your direction. The advantage being that you get the confirmation. The disadvantage being that you give up some of your price, uh, some of your profit potential. The uh, advantage of limits is that you do get a better price with more upside potential, but you also catch 100% of the losers. It's best to look at both and see if you see any notable uh, increase in performance. And if you do, then you probably want to use those. Additionally, we have a very simple exit strategy. It formed a great foundation as our basis, but the, the suggestions I mentioned in the second video are probably worth taking a look at. There are probably ways to make the performance more consistent and uh, a lot easier to trade on a day-to-day -day basis. This is Sean Overton with OneStepRemove.com. Thank you for listening.